Very tricky question. Will the ANC uh, come out above 50 or below 50 in November? Um, and it is uh, easy to make, I think, arguments either way because the situation is so finely balanced. South Africa's local government elections are taking place on 1 November, but how will the various political parties perform in these elections? Well, we at the Centre for Risk Analysis commissioned polling to understand voter preferences and attitudes in the run-up to these elections. What follows is a short extract from an exclusive client webinar where we presented this data to CRA clients for the very first time. If you would like access to the full data set that informed this presentation, you can click on the link in the description below to our 30-day free trial. Enjoy. So on this slide, you'll see we've got two parts to the slide. On the left-hand side, we've got the actual outcomes of the various elections since 2009. So those would be both national elections and local government elections. And on the right-hand side, we have various polls that have been conducted since September last year, including both polls by Ipsos and by the CRA. Uh, and that is really <laughs> the magic source. I think that is what everybody's going to want to see, but we'll keep you waiting a little longer to just talk about what has happened in the recent elections since 2009. So Gabriel, I think we can show all uh, five bars. Uh, and what we'll see is that the ANC marked here in green is still very much the dominant party in South Africa as it has been since the dawn of democracy. And the interesting question here, the question on everybody's lips is, how far away is it from that 50% mark, uh, which would uh, signify a change in status from being the dominant party in a one party dominant state to being one party amongst many others vying for the favor of the voters. Uh, and that really for us was the, the key question today is to see where we come out with that. Um, the DA has uh, performed uh, well as well. It stumbled a bit at the last elections um, and for the first time recorded a decline in its support levels. The EFF has shown consistent growth since it emerged on the political scene. Um, and then the IFP and various other small parties have experienced varying fortunes. On the right-hand side now, you'll see the polling results. Uh, Ipsos in 2020 polled the ANC at just on 50%. We polled the ANC just below 50% uh, also last year. Then this year in August, Ipsos had the ANC just below. And now in our poll, we've got the ANC uh, polling at 50.3%. Enjoying this analysis? Click here to sign up for our 30-day free trial for more content from the CIA. I must emphasize here that these numbers are not a prediction of the election outcome. This is like a snapshot at one moment in time where you go out and you ask people, so uh, you know, how do you regard these various parties? Which one would you vote if you had the choice today? But of course, uh, attitudes do change very quickly. They can change from, from week to week. And therefore, these numbers must be read with a bit of caution. Uh, also on a methodological note, in our polling, we did uh, telephonic uh, uh, interviews with 633 registered voters in South Africa, um, demographically representative from all nine provinces, interviewed in the language of their choice. Um, and that sample size gives us a margin of error of plus or minus 4%. So if we've got the ANC at 50% here, that means it could be 46 or as high as 54. Uh, and with 95% confidence, we say that it will be within that bandwidth somewhere. Uh, it really doesn't help us at this stage to answer the question of whether the ANC will get more than 50 or below 50, because it is exactly on that knife edge, balanced very finely there. Um, but by the end of the presentation, we will make a call for you on which way things will go. Just looking at the other parties quickly, um, the DA marked here in blue uh, has a traditionally polled low uh, in Ipsos polls and a little bit uh, higher in CRA polls. Um, we think that this, uh, the number we're seeing here at around 20% probably is a fair reflection. Um, it is also pretty consistent with what we've seen from Ipsos and other polling companies. The EFF uh, occupies a lot of space in our political awareness in South Africa, um, but its presence on the uh, political scene in terms of uh, outcomes and elections tends to uh, be somewhere between 10 and 13, 14 
maybe 15%. And that's where we see it as well. The IFP has uh, surprised us. Um, we polled them at 6.7% this time around. Maybe that is a result of recent developments in KZN with the uh, death of the old king, the uh, investiture of the new king, uh, the uh, also the violence in the province during July, all of which we think may be factors that are mobilizing the ethnic vote and helping the IFP to increase its share of the vote. If I, John, if I could just swing in with one methodological point. Please. Uh, which is just to say that one of the differences, but just to emphasize what's already been said, just that a difference between CRA and Ipsos polling is that Ipsos polled uh, all eligible South Africans, but not necessarily registered voters. So they had to generate turnout scenarios to make sense from their raw data of what kind of uh, voting situation we're looking at for the ANC. And we did cover this in an earlier CRA briefing. By contrast, the CRA poll is only of registered voters. If someone was not a registered voter, they did not partake in this poll. And that uh, affects um, the, the way the turnouts should affect uh, the, the, the difference between this snapshot and what ends up happening in the day uh, but it, main, it, it remains the case that the sort of biggest and most difficult question to answer in anticipation of an election is what the actual turnout will be. Uh, and uh, different turnout scenarios would have different effects. Um, we'll, we'll get to that a bit more later, but I just wanted to highlight that methodological difference between us and Epsos. Right. Uh, you've made it this way, all the, all the way through to here. And uh, before we show the great reveal, uh, what we will show you on the next slide um, is going to be our call on the elections um, at the CRA. We like to make the hard calls, but I must preface that by saying that we did have a lot of to and fro internally uh, amongst colleagues and also with ourselves to try to answer this very tricky question. Will the ANC uh, come out above 50 or below 50 in November? Um, and it is uh, easy to make, I think, arguments either way because the situation is so finely balanced. But we will make a call for you, um, and we can bring up the drum roll now, Gabriel. <laughs> Thank you. And show the next slide. So we uh, uh, very cautiously call this the CRA estimates of local elective election outcomes. So this is not the polling result. This is us saying what we think is going to happen. We think the ANC will come in below 50, we're giving it 49%. We think the DA is going to come in at 22, which is quite a lot worse than it did in 2016, but a little bit better than it did in 2019. The EFF, we think, will come in at 12, and other parties, uh, so that's the remaining rest of all the, all the other votes, we think will be 17%. And I think in order to explain this a bit more closely, uh, we need to show you the breakdown of those 17%. So where, where are those other votes going? So gains and losses of political parties. Um, we compare the situation with 2016 when the smaller parties collectively got 11%. And we are saying that now in 2021, those smaller parties we think will collectively get 17%. That's a big difference. And that needs justification and explanation. So where is that 6% difference going to come from? Where, where, you know, which parties are getting it? So we say that those six percentage points we think will be explained through a five point drop by the DA, which drops from 27, that was its result in 2016, down to 22, and a one point drop in the combined ANC and EFF support levels, which if you added them together in 2016, were at 62, and we think that now goes down to 61. Uh, so the DA's five points that it loses, we think will go to the Freedom Front Plus probably, maybe one and a half percent, maybe another one and a half percent to Action SA, Herman Mashala's new party, which uh, we think will do best in, in Johannesburg and Gauteng. This is where his, his biggest footprint is and where he's most well known. Another one and a half percent maybe to the Patriotic Alliance and good, uh, mainly in colored areas, maybe also in the Western Cape and 0.5 percentage points to other parties. And then uh, at the final category, the ANC, we think, gives four to the EFF and one to the IFP. And that would uh, tally up with uh, the totals. It brings us back to 100%. And we think this is a plausible explanation of what's going to happen. 
But uh, we are very curious to see what will actually transpire on the 1st of November. Uh, and we'll also be following other polls closely and the political reporting to see uh, what, what our, our peers think in the industry. But uh, that is our conclusion. And uh, we look forward to discussing this with you. Thanks for watching. Let's hand over to you now. How do you think the various political parties will perform in the November election? Leave your predictions in the comments section below. Also, if you would like access to the full recording of this webinar and you're not yet a CRA client, you can join us on that 30-day free trial. Do click on the link in the description below for more information. My name is David Ansara. Until next time, take care.